It's the Morning X, R-E-M, Night Swimming. I'm Barnes, that's Leslie, and look, there's Michael Stipe hanging out with us this morning. This has been incredibly cool. <laughs> I've got a little more time with you, so thank you for hanging and getting up early to be with us, so thank it's you. A little, yes. it's, a little, it's a little early in the day for me, Barnes, but I know. I'm, I'm happy to talk to you guys. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> It is such an honor to speak with you. And speaking of night swimming, I had a couple of things I wanted to mention that have been said about you because of your influence and REM's influence. One was from Chris Martin, who said night swimming was the best song ever written. And Bono sang REM's Michael Stipe's lyrics, change the way we see America. He also has one of the greatest voices of any geography. Oh. When people say that about you or your songs <laughs> and your well, influence, I mean, I know it's hard to, to hear those things, but you have had a tremendous influence on a whole generation of artists and fans. Well, thank you, Leslie. I mean, it, it sounds ridiculous to say, but those guys are both longstanding and very dear friends of mine, and so they have to say nice things about me in public, you know. <laughs> but um, I, have, I have such deep admiration for, for Chris and, uh, and, and Coldplay. And also, of course, for Bono and you too. I mean, I've, I've been a fan of each of those bands since they started. Uh, and, you know, we've swapped ideas back and forth. I mean, just, you know, behind the scenes, uh, we're all pulling from the, from you know, we're all pulling out of the ether and trying to figure out, you know, as as artists and musicians, you know, what is what is what is our what is our duty? And I, I, I think that our our duty is to kind of take the present moment and try to make it make a little bit more sense, or or try to help present it in a way that that helps people move forward in a way that's progressive and 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 and, and hopeful and good. And uh, and so yeah, I mean, it's just really nice to hear that from those guys. Thank you for thank you for telling me. Well, you know, Michael, having you on, which it, it, it amazes me that you've never been on the closest that you've been was you came and did rock line in our studios one time in atlanta but it was like on a weekend we've never had you on so people would put a beat down on me if i didn't ask you and clear the elephant from the room i see i follow you on instagram the pictures you've been posting lately you look happier than maybe i've ever seen you i mean you look amazing you look healthy and happy and we're living in this time where nostalgia is such a thing is it still a hard no that there would ever be any kind of rem music tour or whatever barns 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 are we really wasting our time by no i I have to ask (laughs) all right the answer is no but thank you for asking i would get beaten i am i am amazing and happy and healthy and uh i also learned you know as, as an older man uh, uh, my my kind of stone face that I used throughout my twenties and thirties doesn't really work. It doesn't really work in my sixties. I mean, I, I I I took a few notes from Andy Warhol and figured out, you know, how to present myself in a way that just looked completely nonplussed by anything. Uh, that doesn't really fly in your sixties. So I learned. I, I you know I I, I I whitened my teeth and I learned how to smile. And uh, and 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 that's why you're seeing me smiling a lot now. You don't look sixty. I'm 63. I'm three 21 year olds with their tails tied together. So I'm 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 thrilled to be here, and and I, I hope that I'm showing that you know 63 is not a terrible. All right. Thing. For the record, the the answer is still no. That's a hard no, and I, I speak I speak for I speak for all the guys when I say that. Yeah, and I know that you know Peter's on tour. Um, I had dinner with Mike the other the other day uh, after this wedding that we were at in, in Athens, and uh, he's doing great. And you know Bill's a farmer, and uh, and we're all. We're all working on our different projects, and we're all, you know, excited and happy for each other. Uh, and I'm, you know, I am really, um, I am really excited about this this record. I mean, it's daunting uh, for me. My voice uh, is, has changed a little bit, but I think it actually got a little bit better in some registers. I lost a little bit of my. Um, uh, oh, well, we can leave that to Tom York and and, uh, and and others, but I lost a little bit of my uh, falsetto. But but my voice is deepened in a way that I really appreciate. When will it be out? I'm going to shoot for uh, spring of next year, and but that's not that's not a that's not a hard. I'm not sure about that. To tell you the okay. truth, I, I, I don't I don't have a record label. I don't have I don't I don't have any kind of representation at all at this moment. So I'm I'm really flying by the seat of my pants. But I'm enjoying it, and I'm and that's a big part of what this record is for me. Is I'm just trying to I'm trying to trust. You know, after 32 years of REM, I learned that instinct is important. And if, if each of us, in whatever it is that we do, trusted our instinct a little bit more, I think the world would be a lot happier place. And so, 
you know, just as, as a musician and a songwriter, I'm trying to trust my instinct and not, li- not listen to the doubting voice and the shadow voice and, 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 and the voice that says, you know, you're up against Michael from R.E.M. I'm just trying to do what, I'm, what I do now and do it in the best way that I know how. And part of that involves, and thank you for mentioning my Instagram, but I, you know, I, I despise social media for so many reasons, so many of them are <laughs> political. But, but I, I did realize this is the town hall right now as much as I hate uh, uh, Instagram. And it is, it is the only thing that I, that I uh, it is my only uh, outreach there uh, on social media. But I've been enjoying uh, being, you know, at Michael Stipe. It's kind of fun. Well, it's exciting to hear about everything you're doing and the music. And again, such an honor to have you on. And if you ever want to come back on and preview yeah. new music, you can take over the entire morning show and do that. You yeah. have an open invitation. I've got your number now, so I yeah. will actually reach out to you with yeah. that. I would love to, no, love yeah. to Seriously. Some, some new stuff to you guys. Thank you. I want to talk about your art for a second because you have, every time I go to Bistro Nico in Atlanta, I see the foxes that I know oh, yeah. you did. And do you ever see a, a time where you would have this converge between maybe your visual work and your music? Well, I think, you know, working with R.E.M., I, 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 I spent several decades working closely with video video and filmmakers and uh, and uh, and graphic designers and graphic artists and, and other musicians and people that uh, play a type of music that I, that, that I have no knowledge of. But uh, I, li- I, like, I like the confluence of all these things. And so... Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think what the 21st century offers us is a way to look at these things not as distinct and separate um, uh, entities or, or mediums, but but looking at them all combined. I also I'm fascinated by, by contemporary dance, and so hopefully I'll be able to incorporate all those things into the presentation of of, of the of this solo album when it comes out. Well, when you do art like that, like your the foxes or things like that, do you approach that like are you motivated? the same way you're motivated to write a song? Like, is it just something comes over you and you're like, I'm going to make these foxes or I'm going to do this dance? Like, what drives you to do these different things? Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I can't not do it. <laughs> um, it's, not, it's not by choice, that's for sure. Um, now, choosing different mediums is, is a choice, of course, but, um, you know, the music thing, I just kind of fell back into. The foxes, it's funny that you mentioned that because I, I, I love that those are there in Atlanta they were um, uh, they were really the, the first people to kind of recognize and, and honor the work that I do outside of music. But um, but I've, I've been I've been powder coating foxes uh, all week long, uh, and so I'm 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 I'm, I'm working right now on, on, on a, a few different sets of, of that same piece. So cool. Um, but in kind of candy colors, you know. Speaking of uh, influences and and what you've been influenced by, you've said that you pop radio was a big influence for you. Do you remember like your first musical? Experience or something that just caught you that you were like an a wow moment of something you heard on pop radio. Well, when I when I was a kid, you know, my father was in was in the army, and so as a military brat, we traveled, we moved around a, a great deal. Um, pop radio in Germany was very different than pop radio in Texas, and I was in both of those as a as a very young boy, uh, and also in Georgia. Uh, but but yeah, my 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 distinct memory is going to the record store, a kindly old Mister Pemberton. Uh, in Copper's Cove, Texas, um, <laughs> opened up uh, uh, opened up the, the, the 45s for my sisters and I to peruse, and we wound up with a Tammy Wynette. Um, uh, um, what was that song called? Um, well, D I V O R C E by Tammy Wynette. Uh, no, it was D I V O R C E, and then oh, um, yeah. oh yeah, yes, uh, Elvis, Elvis Presley, and um, uh, uh, a Beatles uh, a Beatles 45, and um, uh, the guy that wrote. Um, Shoot, I can't think of the name of it. Arian covered it. Uh, I can't think of the name of it. But he's a country, a country artist. But I really loved that stuff. And I, you know, I was a kid, so I loved the banana splits and the monkeys. And they kind of had more of an influence on me than the Beatles did, to, to, to tell the truth, because I didn't have an older brother or sister who, you know, absorbed music the way some people do. But, um, but uh, I really loved, you know, bubblegum music, and you know that worked its way into some of the stuff that Arian did. All right, let's leave it on a serious note. You, you, Michael Stipe, have been involved in activism for you know many years. Yeah. How do you feel the music industry's role in you know societal and political activism has evolved? Well, the first thing, the first benefit that REM ever uh, performed at uh, 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 was in Atlanta, and it was for an environmental organization uh, for lawyers representing uh, environmental groups that needed uh, that needed uh, uh, legal legal help. And uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm friends. I, I mentioned earlier, you know, the Stop Cop City movement, which I'm just so excited to be a part of. And I'm friends with, uh, with you know, Bill, Bill McKibben is a, a great activist and environmentalist. And I met him through Jesse Paris 
Smith and her organization, Pathway to Paris, which is uh, Patty Smith's daughter, who's a great activist. And, and Bill is really active with the Stop Cop City movement and looking at it from an environmental perspective, you know, what it would mean to uh, folks living there in DeKalb County uh, where they're planning to put this thing. I, I, I'm just so proud of, uh, uh, of knowing him and, and people like Mariah Parker, who Athens is very proud of, and she's a she's a big uh, she's a big uh, proponent of of of, uh, of this referendum campaign to try to bring uh, Atlanta voters uh, into the uh, in, into the into the conversation about whether Cop City should even be built or not. Um, and I, I I think we you know we have just sixty days to collect seventy five thousand signatures, but that puts it on the ballot, and then we can vote and decide. We can really debate and really. Get, get into the nitty gritty of it and, and decide if this is, is, is a smart move or not. I happen to think it's not. And uh, I, I do believe that, that um, police police need, need good training, but, but probably not in DeKalb County and probably not there. But what you said is something very important. I, and I think that it needs to be noted again, that what you said was key was it needs to be there for the people to vote that live here and there. And oh, not sure. and not just bullied one way or the other. I think the people speaking is the most important thing. And guy, you know, from a guy that's born into cab like you, I mean, what a great person to to be behind it. Whether you're for it or not, at least you have ownership, yep. and you know, you're in involved. Exactly, and it gets a conversation started. And I think that's so important, Barnes, that that the people uh, feel like their voice can be heard. You know, we've seen in Georgia uh, how important it is for people to register to vote and then to vote. Well, this is something that I think everybody should be able to vote for. Yeah. Well, thank you for getting up early and doing this. This has just oh, been a gosh, huge yeah. thing for us to have you on finally. What a joy. On 99X and on the Morning X. So, Michael Stipe, thank you very much. Michael, thank you. Thank you. It's been my pleasure, Barnes. Thanks, Leslie. Great to hear you. Have a great day. Sorry to get up so early. <laughs> All right. Now I'm going, going to breakfast. <laughs> All right. Bye, Michael. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. The Morning X. With Barnes and Leslie. 99.